We are getting very close to the official Intel 14th generation reveal date. As a result, more and more details get leaked. In this video, I've compiled all the information we know so far. And that is a lot of stuff. I am talking about the number of cores in everything from the i3 to the i9 models, other specifications, performance and release dates. Also, I've compiled the 14th generation comparison to the 12th and 13th generation of Intel processors, as well as the Ryzen 7000 series by AMD. So by the end of this video, you will know if it is worth for you to wait for the Intel 14th generation CPUs to arrive, or if you should buy an alternative at a discount now instead. But first… CDKeyOffer.com is my number one choice for when I need to buy a cheap Microsoft software key. They are a reliable provider of affordable keys to me, my friends and the channel community for over two years now, so highly recommend it. Use my discount code IVADIM to get 30% off an already amazing price and grab yourself a Windows 10 Pro for $16, Windows 11 Pro for $23 or Office 2021 for just $52. You can use PayPal for fast and secure payment and get your key instantly. Links to all these products are in the description below. At this point, it is absolutely clear that Intel's 14th generation of desktop processors will feature a refresh of the Raptor Lake architecture found in the current 13th generation processors. So we won't see the highly anticipated Meteor Lake architecture on desktop this year. Although Meteor Lake will arrive to laptops. So if you are in the market for a new laptop, then the 14th gen Meteor Lake based laptop is certainly worth waiting for, as it will bring a much better CPU performance, power efficiency and much much higher integrated graphics performance. As for the desktop processor's release date, according to the latest leaks, Intel plans to launch the K-series of the 14th generation in the middle of October this year. Those are the i5-14600K, i7-14700K and i9-14900K CPUs. It is highly likely that we will see an official announcement during the Intel Innovation Day on September 19th. The non-K series are rumored to launch at a later date, early next year. Most likely at the CES 2024 in the first week of January. The Intel 14th generation processors will utilize the same 600 and 700 series motherboards. This makes it easy for any existing 12th and 13th generation processor owners to upgrade to the 14th generation using the motherboard they already own. Just don't forget to update your motherboard BIOS first to enable the 14th gen support. It is way easier to do the update while you still have your old CPU installed. Now let's discuss the most impressive changes coming to the 14th generation over the 13th generation of desktop processors. According to the latest leaks, Intel has increased the number of cores in most products in the lineup. This change will benefit the i3, i5 and i7 buyers the most. The i3-14100 is rumored to come with 6 cores and 12 threads. We are talking about 6 big performance cores, not those little ones that is two cores more than the i3-13100 has. Basically, it is the same configuration as the i5-12400 from the 12th generation. It is a shame that the non-K processors will not arrive until January next year, as I suspect the i3-14100 will be the new bestseller, if Intel doesn't increase its price compared to the previous generation i3 products. The i5-14400 is another CPU worth getting excited about. It is rumored to come with 6 performance and 8 efficiency cores for a total of 14 cores and 20 threads. That is the same configuration as the higher tier i5-13600K. This is huge for anyone who needs a lot of multi-threading performance on a budget. Unfortunately, this is yet another CPU we won't see until the next year. The i5-14600K is rumored to feature an increased number of cores as well. 8 performance and 8 efficiency cores for a total of 16 cores and 24 threads, comparable to the i7-13700K configuration. The i7-14700K features 8 performance and 12 efficiency cores for a total of 20 cores and 28 threads. This brings the upcoming i7 closer to the likes of i9-13900K and the upcoming i9-14900K in terms of multi-threading performance. The i9-14900K seems to be the only CPU that doesn't get more cores this time around. 
It is stuck with 8 performance and 16 efficiency cores for a total of 24 cores and 32 threads. The same as its predecessor, the i9-13900K. However, the 14900K is rumored to feature higher core clock frequency at 6 GHz, which is 0.2 GHz higher than the 13900K. The i9-14900KS is going to be at the top of the Intel's 14th generation lineup with the same number of cores and 6.2 GHz core clock. The KS CPUs usually have limited availability and are priced much higher than their K-series counterparts. I doubt that the 14900KS will manage to bring significant value over the 14900K. Additionally, it is unclear when this Halo product will launch. I do not expect to see it launch at the same time as the other 14th Gen K series processors. Next, let's have a look at some leaked Intel 14th Gen benchmarks and figure out where the new processors will land in terms of performance in professional applications and games compared to the current generation of Intel and AMD offerings. The best example we currently have is the alleged i7-14700K benchmark. Compared to the i7-13700K, the 14700K scores 6% higher in single-core and 25% higher in multi-core Cinebench tests. In the CPU-Z benchmark, the 14700K managed to outperform the 13700K by 4% in single-core and 18% in multi-core tests. Please note that these are not direct comparisons, so take the performance comparison numbers with a pinch of salt. But this does provide us with a good indication of where the i7-14700K as well as other 14th generation processors may land in terms of performance. The 4-6% single-thread performance uplift is the best indicator of what to expect from the 14th generation in games. It should be able to compete with the Ryzen 7800X3D and 7950X3D pretty well. Only the price and availability will determine the winner of this battle. And from what I hear, AMD can afford to lower the Ryzen 7000 series prices further if needed. As a matter of fact, I expect AMD to lower its prices to remain competitive once Intel launches its 14th generation of processors. It will be a big win for us, customers, as we will be able to get the same CPU performance cheaper, especially in the lower tier i3 and i5 segments. Core for core, there won't be any big performance improvements because Intel is manufacturing the 14th generation on the same Intel 7 process it uses to make the 12th generation CPUs. The next big leap for Intel will be the 15th generation based on the Arrow Lake microarchitecture, expected to arrive in late 2024, early 2025. I've made a video about it. Check it out at the link in the description after you are done with this video. Now let's talk about my recommendation on whether the 14th generation is worth waiting for. If you want the latest and greatest Intel CPU, then it is obvious that you will have to wait for the i9-14900K. However, you will not be missing out on much if you get the 13900K now, as it is selling well below MSRP and goes on sale from time to time. Check it and other CPUs at the link in the description below if you don't feel like waiting for the 14th gen to arrive. The 13th Gen i7 and i5 prices are also fairly low now. Buying previous generation is the best strategy if you can snipe a good deal, because it will be a while before the 14th generation prices settle down. Buying a brand new i7 or i5 on day one is almost never a good strategy if you are looking for good value. Even the 6-core i3-14100 is difficult to recommend waiting for because you can grab a perfectly good 6-core i5-12400F for under $150 now. As it usually happens, the next-gen's worst competition is the discounted last-gen products. The Ryzen 7000 series also currently sells below MSRP and goes on sale from time to time, reducing the price even further. So now is a good time to build a PC from scratch. Additionally, DDR5 memory, SSDs, as well as other components are so cheap now that it may not be worth the risk to wait for the 14th generation, as the prices of other PC parts may change not in your favor. I am not saying they will though, no one can predict the future. But if you are interested in what the future will bring, then check out my video about the RTX 5090 and other RTX 50 series graphics cards. It should be on your screen now, ready to be clicked.
If you enjoyed this video, then reward it with a like and subscribe for more if you haven't already. It was I, Vadim, until next time.